Hello? Yep, okay. I just thought I'd spend another hour or so playing some more, mostly arcade games, I think, in MAME. Um, I'm just going to start with GORF, because there were some improvements to the speech emulation over the last uh, year or so. Um, I don't think it sounds quite as good as some of the other games with the same speech chip yet, but that might be a balanced thing more than anything else. So, let's just cut it up and play it for a little bit. I mean, it still sounds much better than it did a while ago, because uh, for a while the speech chip emulation went really bad um, after it was rewritten and samples were dropped. But um, you know, the recent the improvements from last year seem to have taken it up to at least the level of I'd say the old samples. Hey, Mad Moose, how are you doing? Well, thank you for joining. But yeah, it it sounds pretty good now. Uh, I think maybe compared to some real hardware videos I've seen, there's a little room for improvement still. But um, yeah, I like how it sounds now. Uh, maybe the uh, maybe the overall sound balance could do with some work too. I, I don't know. It's not really almost my field, but you can play it and it's satisfying. Now the thing that surprised me most about Gorf is maybe none of not. Oh dear, I'm getting destroyed here. Um, it's how they managed to get away with quite blatantly just stealing graphics on other games. Um, I'll, I'll probably start a new credit. Um, if you look at the first level, these are clearly Taito's Space Invaders. There's no Space Invaders license associated with this game. They've just kind of decided, oh yeah, we want Space Invaders and we want to colour them in a little bit, so, you know, let's use them. I mean, there's, it's got a bit of creativity with the shield, but mm, <laughs> I'm surprised they got away with this. All right, well, uh, that's all right. Okay, uh, Man Moose, thank you for dropping by anyway. Um, you know, it's always good to hear people in the chat know there's somebody out there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, good, good, good. Uh, what is it? Um, DK, um, where, what time is it where you are? I would, I'm, if it's Denmark, that would be uh, mid afternoon, like here, really, wouldn't it? Or is DK something else in this case? You know, I'm not sure what my plans are. I think I'm probably only going to stream for about an hour because I was meant to be uh, doing playing some on online games with some friends later, but I think they're a little busy at the moment, so um, we'll see how it plays out. That might end up being done tomorrow instead. Yeah. Oh, okay. You are in Denmark. You just, uh, you know, it's a a mid um, a mid afternoon start then. Oh, you're about to leave work, not leave for work. Sorry, I misread that entirely. That's why I'm getting confused. You're about to leave work. That makes more sense. Um, why was I thinking leave for work? But yeah, okay, so not not a nice, not a mid-afternoon start, but a, a mid-afternoon finish. That's all right, isn't it? Well, that's all right. Sorry about that. But yeah, um, so this, is, this is what happens when I'm trying to uh, multitask and uh, read things too quickly. But, um, and of course they're called the Stage Galaxians, and you know they're not even trying to hide where they've taken the the content from. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's it's a good game. It holds up well, I think. It's just surprisingly unoriginal in terms of everything. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, here we go. Yeah, it's I, it's one of those where the default view in MAME as well has some lamps that are emulated at the side. I've had to uh, chop those off for the purpose of the view I've got going on here. And as you can see, I'm not especially I'm not especially good at golf either. It's also one of those where if you insert two credits, you can um, get six lives, which is a bit. Different. I mean, there aren't many games that give you a different number of lives depending on how many credits you insert. Um, I don't know if many people took advantage of that back in the day or just sort of ignored it and didn't want to put in two credits. 
but it's, it's one of the things that just stand out as a bit different with uh, Gorf compared to most others. One of the only other games I can think of th that um, does that for different reasons is Mitchell's Mad Motor, but I think that's because it's a prototype and if you insert like eight credits you become invulnerable and you just complete the entire game without doing anything. Um, Uh, yeah. I think they get they did get the sound design right on this as well. It's uh, always busy. You know, there's not much in the way of silence. There's always some very 80s sounds going on with this one. But uh, it's got all this. It does frame skip itself internally though, because the whole the programming the game. I can't remember. Was it written in Fortran? I'm thinking it was. Was it Fortran or Fourth or something like that? I seem to remember some reading something like that about these games. But, um, anyway. Now, I'm going to, after this credit, I'm going to switch to, um, I think, one of the other versions of Gorf. Um, because, well, you know, it's nice to hear it in English. I believe there is a uh, set with German speech supported. So I might switch to that one in shortly. Let's see how I do first. But, um, I've said before, that's one of the advantages of emulating speech chips is you don't have to have samples for the, the new versions that show up. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, they are different languages. Oops. But, um, yeah, Berserk. I think Berserk we've got uh, Spanish sets and German sets. Yeah, I, I think especially now I'm playing on headphones as well. It sounds even better on headphones. I've noticed that with a lot of these games when I've been streaming, you just hear so much more in the sounds when you've got them on headphones. Sega music comes to life, especially. Uh, the flagship. Hmm. Did people call them flagships before this, or is this the first time the term flagship was used? Because I know the the, uh, the uh, boss in Phoenix tends to get called a flagship too, and it's the flags you get when you loop on certain games in the corner. But I think this is the only time I've seen flagship printed on the screen like that. Try. Try again. Oh, okay, well, let's swap to the other set now that I mentioned. Because, uh, let's what's the set name? Oh, PGM1G. Because one thing I do want to do with, uh, you know, these these videos is show off things that maybe people ha aren't used to seeing and a lot of the time people just overlook the clones. In cases like this you see everything has been translated to German and even the speech is you know redone in German. Now I don't know if it's good German or bad German because I don't speak German but I think when you've got German combined with robotic voices, it works really well. Um, I, I don't know why, I, but uh, I find the same when I'm playing Berserk. I really like playing the German set. I just think it's it's, it's slightly more intimidating. Maybe it's just because you don't know what the robot's saying. Um, but it doesn't quite have the same effect when I play the Spanish version. I mean, even this is a bit of a rip off of another game, this whole stage. Uh, what's it called? Is it Space Firebird that has the lasers like this? I know there's a Spectrum game, I think, called Firebirds that had those lasers. Yeah, a good bit of golf here. Yeah, I do, I do like to listen to a bit of craft work. I've not listened to them in a while. But, uh, yeah. Um, and other similar bands, of course. I mean, um, 
OMG did that English Electric album, which is uh, very craft work influenced. <laughs> I really like that one actually. Is it English Electric? I think it's English Electric. And it's one of the new ones anyway. Some of those older bands, uh, they've been putting out good material. I mean, I've been listening to a lot of the Shriekback albums as well. They're really good. Yeah, even, like the last four are really fantastic albums. Yeah, people just think, oh, they're an 80s band. But uh, some of them are still putting out quality. Um, and obviously, yeah, Kraftwerk were a big influence on so many bands. Never one I got to see live, but no. that's how it is sometimes. But, um, I guess also, you know, I, I just like to see what arcade games were like in other regions, and whenever you play something that's in a different language, you know you're playing something that is how it would have been in a different region. I mean, I guess that's most golf machines in Germany would have been the German version, unless it was one of those where the English words were just more common anyway. But I don't know. I was not there. Um, I recently looked at that Mega Drive set from Argentina as well, the uh, hack of J League Soccer 2. Um, no, that's. I think that's a bit later on. That was sold as like um, Football '96. But that was, you know, there's a lot of work had gone into that hack, and um, like many of the Mega Drive bootlegs, it had a little bit of protection on it, which is why it'd been marked as a bad dump in the first place because it didn't work in existing emulators, it had covered graphics, but they just put a protection check before a lot of the DMA commands in it, and with that worked out, it was it just ran fine. Not going to be playing that one on stream, but <laughs> probably played golf for long enough at this point. But let's just play out this credit. This German version seems easier. I don't know if it's because it's the older program revision in general. Well, I, don't, I don't know what hit me there. <laughs> also, one thing I've noticed playing this with the shader on is the stars look really good because you've got this slight uh, persistence on the screen, so it's making them twinkle a lot more than they might otherwise. They never quite fully vanish. So. Take, take your eye off the screen for a second though and that happens. There we go. Um, obviously the other big one using the speech like this um, other than Qbert which is the, me one, the main thing people remember this speech chip for even though Qbert makes very little use of it um, the other one on this hardware is Wizard, Wizard of War which is also a really addictive game if you start playing it but uh, I don't think I'll be playing Wizard of War today I might play Wizard of War another day <laughs> is that it? Oh well. I got beaten on mission nine. That's not actually a bad run, is it? Mission nine. Um, I think people still say the colours are a bit off on this, but I'm not 100 percent sure on what they should look like um, or why they would be off. To me, it looks it, it looks fine enough. I think. You can adjust the brightness and gamma settings and everything else to get a bit closer maybe to what people are expecting. I don't know the extent of uh, how bad it supposedly is, uh, but I've always seen it like this. But maybe it's just because I've never experienced it in any other way. Um, I've always seen it in MAME. But yeah, this was Gorf, a good, fun, classic game. Not the most original. It clearly steals a bunch of uh, graphics and things from elsewhere and somehow got away with it, but... A fun playable game. Now I'm going to look at another shooter from the 80s. This time I'm going to go with something that is IRM, and that is Red Alert. Now this uh, has the, um, the speech. I don't know if it's meant to play it on startup like this, but it does initially when you turn it on and play this. The sound emulation is 100% complete on this. 
but I think there were some driver improvements here during the last uh, year or so. So I just wanted to give this one a little try and uh, see how it holds up. It might be more Demon Eye that got the improvements, but I can have a look at that one later. Now, this is on the IRAM, I want to say M27, but I might be wrong there. There you go, you see, nice bit of speech, and this is an 81 gain. But then, you know, there's some sounds not emulated. It might be discrete sounds like Space Invaders going on here for the shots and stuff. Uh, you know, an odd combination to have speech chips and then discrete sound, but that's what happened early on. If they had circuits that made booms well, they used them. But, uh, obviously, you can tell there's some limitations of what the hardware here can do. Uh, so, you know, your explosions and other planes are hiding planes around them, and it's quite primitive hardware, really. Uh, don't know all the details of the hardware. Not one I've studied much. Oh dear, uh, I ran out of time, didn't I? It, uh, became, it arrived at uh, 11 and didn't destroy the planes. So this is this Merv thing that has been launched. Um, and now I, yeah. So yeah, there's a time limit in a different section. This is a nasty section because these bombs, if you go anywhere in the red zone, they will kill you. <laughs> oh, so it's, it's not just a case of avoiding single pixel bullets. It's a case of avoiding huge areas of the ground where the bombs are going off. And yeah, if you blow them like that, they still land on you. The end. You're number one today. Now well, let's see if I can do any better than that. Red alert. Enemy I would like to get past France at least. Ideally, let's not let Merv be launched either. Yeah, I do wonder what this one would sound like with full sound emulation. It's kind of one of those that I, I, I fire up every now and again and um, just wonder. But it seems to be a very rare game. I've not seen any original footage of it. Hey, hey Ari Mass, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Um, so I'm just going to spend about an hour playing. Some random games, mostly shooters, I think, but maybe a few others. Um, I'm good, thank you. Um, so I'm just um, just relaxing a bit before I, I work out what I'm doing later. Seeing, uh, waiting to see if some friends are around because we're going to play a bit of Monster Hunter World online with them. Um, but that might end up being tomorrow instead. Oh dear, I didn't destroy the jets in time again. Um, I think if you destroy all these before they land, you get away with it. But if you don't, then your city is blown up. Oh, I got away with it. The speech is a nice touch. I mean, you don't, <laughs> you don't see much speech in games from this early. This is what, 81, I think I said. But Iron generally didn't do that much in their speech. This is obviously a sampled speech rather than anything more complex. Like, uh, I mean, it's not the Votrex stuff like uh, Gough was. But, um, oh. There we go. So, Unite Attack. It's got the spot, the, you know, the, the floodlights. For the, what are they called? Spotlights? No, I forgot what they're called. The uh, the lights, so you can only see the parts that are illuminated. Again, a nice little effect. Uh, it's sort of what you'd expect to see. Uh, what about Dragon Master? Um, the Unico Fighter. I might put that on. I'm not very good at it, but I might put that on in a bit. Um, I played Master's Fury on a stream. Um, a few weeks back, but yeah, the original Dragon Master is uh, not a bad one, is it? 
In fact, most people have said Dragon Master is better than Master's Fury. Master's Fury just doesn't seem as well programmed or balanced. It's like they've tried to take the idea of Dragon Master. No, Dragon Master is. I think the right game. Dragon Master. Hmm. Oh, we get a little tune. Um, and a rainbow. I'm not sure they were the, those were the correct rainbow colours, but maybe that's just how it looks. But peace forever. Peace forever until you get to the United States, and now the same thing's happening. Oh, got bombed. Damn, is that? Yeah, that's my game over. All right. Well, I didn't do too bad on that. I got to see a, a you know, a beat one country screen with the rainbow and peace forever sign. So, yeah, that was. IRM's red alert, which you know is one to keep an eye on for future improvements. I think it's what I've been doing with it. Um, so, yeah, Dragon Master it is the one I thought it was. So, yeah, let's put a bit of Dragon Master on, and this is a 94 Unico on hardware that is best described as a CPS1 clone, really. Um, it's quite loud in my headphones, I'll turn that down a little bit. But yeah, Unico, I kind of like some Unico stuff. Um, this seems to be, for a Korean game, quite an ambitious project. You know, there's a whole choice of characters here. You've got, you know, your eight, your eight normal characters to choose from. And you've got plenty of stages. So, you know, while a lot of Korean games are low effort, this one was clearly a bigger project. And yeah, you're going to get a lot of traced graphics and everything else, and traced animation frames, because that's just Korean games for you, really, isn't it? But, you know, you've got your multi-layer scrolling as well, which always looks good. Um, yeah, line scroll on the floor. All things that a lot of Korean games don't have. I mean, even when they've cloned other hardware, quite often you've seen um, line scroll features in the light removed or changed or not used. If you look at a lot of Semicom games, they're cloning Data East hardware, but don't really use any of the features. Um, anything like that. Um, I mean, say BC Story sports game, who would have thought maybe they would use row scroll on the ground, but they just hard coded a lot of different frames. That's not the most useful of moves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. I thought maybe that was going to be a double KO, but it was not. I showed. The sound hardware lets this around a bit, but that, like most Korean games, uh, they've just opted for a pair of uh, sample playback chips and short music loops. Driven by a pick in this case, which is uh, was luckily unprotected. A lot of times picks are protected and they can't be dumped without decapping. But we're lucky with this one that it was not a protected tip. Okay, I'm getting uh, beaten up quite badly. I don't know any of the moves really apart from the basics. I will continue because I'd like I, I do like to. At least beat a stage or two on these things. Dark man. <laughs> uh, we don't get to fight Jedi Ryan yet. I get splinters if he's not careful. But they both are. I like the characters better on this as well than. Um, Master's Fury. I don't know. Master's, Master's Fury doesn't really have any much appeal to me. I know it was a popular one to get emulated and everybody liked to see the video. But I think a lot of that was due to knowing it was the original version of that PlayStation uh, Master's Fighter game. <laughs> and it's much better than the Master's Fighter. I, I, that Master's Fighter one is bad. 
It's just like they've, they've been given some assets they didn't know what to do with and tried to remake the game with it or something. Am I going to lose again? I aren't. I? Yep. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, hopefully but I will show you a different stage at some point. Or oh, I just put the attract mode on and go, hey look, you can watch the attract mode. You can jump off the side of the screen, look. I like that effect. It's like, yep, there is a side of the screen there, you can jump off it. <laughs> sort of a fourth wall type thing though, because, you know, there's really nothing there, you're jumping off the side of a monitor. Your white desktop computer doesn't have any cords. Um, all my computers have lots of cords. I still buy everything wired. I don't want wireless uh, mice and keyboards and, you know, I don't want batteries to have to remember to change. I mean, I've got the monitors on the... Um, the PC here is about sort of almost five, six metres away and I had to get really long cables for the monitors and everything else, but um, it works. I was getting a bit annoyed by some of the fan noise, so I tried to move it further away into a corner. But I guess in cases like that, you know, wireless might help. But again, wireless is just a lot of hassle in terms of um, remembering to change batteries and charge things up. It annoys me on the uh, PlayStation. I was in the middle of playing last night and the battery ran out on the control. And it's like, ah. Uh, quick swap the swap controller before I die. <laughs> And that was with it warning me. I just somehow it completely ignored the warning. I'm not seeing that, that it was telling me to change the battery. But yeah, I guess wireless is the way forward. Just not what I'm sort of willingly transitioning to yet. Plus, you know, there are lots of security concerns with wireless. And I know that people say they can work out what keys you're pressing from the sound of you typing in every key having a different sound, that type of thing, with a regular keyboard. But with wireless, you're transmitting keys over the air. <laughs> I'm not sure I trust the security too much. Well, I think this is going to be a first stage only um, Dragon Master. The thing is, I know I've beat the first stage on this before. I'm just not getting it there this time. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think Dragon Master is a not today game for me. Um, you just have some nice other stages. I mean, we can skip through this. You see, you go through the attract mode. Ooh. You can see some other stages. But yeah, there you go, you see. That was Dragon Master for a little bit. Um, the next game I'm going to put on is one that has a little weird secret. This is Fix 8. Right, so Fix 8. If you go into Service Mode. Service Mode? Yeah. Configuration. No. Service Mode. Configuration. Now, if you put invincibility mode on down here, which means you can't die, this happens if it's saved. You get this intro. This intro only plays if invincibility mode is on. So any player in the arcades is not going to see this intro unless the arcade have got the, the machine set to a mode where the player can't die. I don't understand why they did that. I mean, was the, was the plan to remove this intro entirely and it just got left on in like this invincibility mode, which is essentially like a debug mode? Or was it meant to be in the game and accidentally got left out or tied to the wrong switch or it doesn't make any sense because it's a nice animated intro with a story it's, it's fully translated to english and it fits 
but there's there's no way you're going to see it in an arcade because there's no reason an arcade would operate their machine on invincibility mode because then play you know players will play it to the end and be on there for like 20 30 minutes on a single credit so it, it's one of those mysteries and we've not seen any official rom sets that have it enabled i'm sure you could hack the rom and enable it yourself all the time if you wanted but in terms of official rom sets it, it's yeah no it's it's just um it seems to be left there maybe as a sort of bonus feature but you're not going to see it because without the invincibility sh um dip switch on it uh, it would do this it would just go straight to the profiles or well, straight to the title screen but you can speed through it as often as you want you see the profiles are gone the um so yeah the profiles are gone the the track demo's gone it, it, everything all the presentation of the game just gets disabled as soon as you turn the invincibility to switch off which is really strange it's a good game though. i mean it's sort of the sequel to um out zone i think it's called very colorful I mean, Toad, Toad, everything Toadland did was really actually pretty good, wasn't it? And this is their sort of shock trooper commando type push scroll walk, walk along shooter. Ooh, satisfying weapons, too. I mean, look at that. Rips straight through things, big explosions. This is. I, I don't think this is an overlooked game. I'm mostly playing it because of that intro thing that I think people aren't going to be aware of. You see this weapon. Not all weapons fire all directions. This one fires up and only up. So that's something to keep in mind when you're changing weapon. I got shot. No, no, that was always going to get me. It's a nice, a nice effect when these appear as well. <laughs> No special hardware to do that either, that's just all all done in the sprite work. It's not like the cave hardware that's got a, a zoom effect that picks um, you know splits up the pixels like that. This has had to have been done manually. And there we go. Terra Planner, definitely one of the better arcade developers from back in the day. Consistently high quality work. Both their own games and the ones they've done for Taito. I think there's uh, been some interesting backstory to read upon about Toplan recently as well. I seem to remember there being an article about the development environment back there. Um, some regrets by the sounds of it, but it was uh, pretty much what you'd expect. <laughs> Development studio, high pressure. I'm sorry for credit feeding these things, I'm just not a good enough player at most of the games to actually play them properly. 
but you know, you don't have to be able to play the games properly to appreciate them, I feel. But let's give it another credit. Now, another reason I'm doing this stream now is because I want to see if the um, Streamlabs issues I've been having have been fixed. Because it was creating false donation notifications. Well, not false ones. It was just going through all the previous uh, donations from two, the last two weeks. About half an hour into every stream. So far that's not happened today. So they might have fixed that. This reminds me of the... Um, Cross out is it Rainbow Arts intro thing they've got going on on the Amiga. That's got these sort of set similar burning trail effects while it draws the logo. And on an A1200, that was the only part of um, Cross Out you could actually play from disc because the, the game wasn't compatible with the A1200. So, you know, you'd boot it up with one of the compatibility programs every now and again and hope it worked with the latest one, and never quite did. So I never actually got to play that game on the Amiga. I just got to see the uh, the intro that does that, that type of effect. be paid for this mission, will I? Oops. <laughs> Don't fall from platforms. It's not good for your health. You can't jump in this, so you've got to walk from platform to platform. This is actually quite challenging, because you've also got to avoid the bullets. It's a... Uh, I mean, there aren't many vertical games, arcade ones, shooters, where you're also dealing with hazards. And while this is, say, more of a Commando Shock Trooper style where they do have that, there are enough bullets going on that sometimes it feels more like a shooter. It sort of it pushes the, the genres, I would say. You know, it um, plays like you, you Commando and Shock Troopers. But the uh, I feel more bullets uh, maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe it's just the design but it just feels a bit more like you're spending time avoiding bullets on these too um and there are a lot of them rather than i mean the command is a hard game there are lots to avoid it just feels different I, I can't put my finger on it it's always felt more like a shooter but it's not a shooter because it's a push scroller Difficult to say, but Fix Eight is yeah, it's a really good game. I'll put the uh, I'll put that intro on one more time for maybe anybody who's joined who's missed it. But yeah, if you put the invincibility mode on and only with the invincibility mode on, none it doesn't matter on the region, nothing else, you get the intro. So we can have another quick look at the intro and then I'll move on to another game. It's a really well animated intro too. I mean there's a lot of the ROM space has been used to do this intro and these graphics. Um, so, yeah, to me it makes absolutely no sense that they drop this. No, no music in the intro, sadly. I know the track sounds are on, so I think the intro is just silent. But uh, maybe they just didn't like this story. But you know, since when has the the story been? A reason to drop uh, an intro from a game. You look at something like uh, Taito's Mega Blast, and it's got the most nonsense story ever. But yeah, you you also lose these um, these profiles, so you don't know the backgrounds of the characters without that. Uh, I don't know. Just one of those things that will probably never make sense. Um, let's stick with shooty games. Let's go with Zachariah, Zachariah, Lazarian. This one was licensed to Midway. It's an Italian game. Not 
all that often did the Italian games get licensed by companies outside of Italy, but this is one of them. Um, so you got your, Zachariah did a lot of sort of classic sounding tunes like this. You play Cat and Mouse, one of the other games, it's full of music. I guess it reminds you more of a home computer game. But it's a multi stage um, shooter where each stage has got its own objective. In this case, you've got to shoot the yellow ones and knock the balls out of them, avoiding everything else. You can only shoot them when they're yellow. There you go. You get to the middle, and now you've got to. You can only, you can, you can, you're restricted to this circle. And you've got to destroy these things on the outside that you freed a minute ago. So, you know, this section is a lot quieter though. I think there are probably analog sounds still missing. Yeah. Got to get your aim right and you've got to avoid the bullets at the same time. And so you, because you can only fire left and right, and you restrict on where you can move. It's not always as easy as it would seem. And I got shot. Then uh, you start the whole section again. Oh, I got shot again. I am better at this than um, than would appear here. I have completed this. Okay. The game is making me look like a liar. Oh, come on. That's not fair. Let's enter the... I, I, I would love to enter the red zone. I'm dying before I enter the red zone. I don't know. Concentration. Slightest lapse of concentration. These games will kill you off like that. But, um, yes, it's suddenly very quiet without the music. Oh dear. Oh dear. Right, how come I'm getting worse at this? I'm trying to rush it, I think. I want to show you the next section so much, I'm trying to rush my way through this one, and that's not a good idea. Also, the collision is a little unkind. Especially when you've just been playing a, you know, a shooter with Japanese game design where the hitbox is tiny and your ship is massive. And now suddenly your hitbox is actually bigger than your ship. Because you know hitboxes that are bigger than ships were a thing. Some of these bullets are also lightning fast. Come on. No. You're not shooting me, you're not shooting me either. <laughs> and I drove straight into that one. Well, maybe we'll get to see the next stage of this game. Maybe we won't. Maybe my inability to play it is just too great. But uh, maybe the clone's hard. Maybe the uh, this version's harder than the original. Because I usually play Laser Battle, the actual Zachariah original. Maybe they up the difficulty in this version, or maybe I'm just getting worse at it. Right, one, one, one left. There we go. Now we get some music again. The Tunnel of Fear. Uh, I mean, I don't know why it's the Tunnel of Fear. And this also reminds me of um, some of the multi-stage games on the Spectrum. If you've played um, Sticks, that's got a whole... Well, the whole game in that one is navigate from bottom to top over different parts of the course. But for some reason, this section of this one reminds me of that. It's very difficult to avoid these bullets. I think you have to shoot them. I don't think there's any way past there, otherwise. Come on. Another credit. Oh, 
chasing me again. Can I not shoot those? Um, apparently not. I'm back to the start again now. So no, I can't shoot these ones, apparently. I don't remember not being able to shoot these ones, but apparently I can't shoot these ones. So avoid them it is. But you have to learn that. You wouldn't know that the first time. Aim for the eye. I've got to aim for the eye with a tiny little laser like this. Somebody please tell me. I've got an up so there we go, I forgot you could fire up. Uh -huh. So yeah, again, very flagship. You know, very... Oh, we played Phoenix. Phoenix has a big boss stage where you destroy the bottom of it like this. Let's do that. This one regenerates, though. At least Phoenix doesn't regenerate. Fuel reserve low. <laughs> so much to contend with. I did work out how to refuel on a uh, combat orc as well, after not working that out on stream. So I might throw combat orc back on in a bit and see if I can actually get a bit further on that than last time I streamed it. Because I think... Um, again, trying to rush this. But to uh, combat orc to refuel, when the uh, you have to keep firing at the tokens that get dropped, which doesn't make any sense at all, but... That's just the logic they went with. There we go. Hit the eye four times. <laughs> The eye does not want to be hit. You can't move up and down on this stage either. <laughs> I hit it once and then it decided to home in on me. The eye is tricky to destroy. You still fire left and right in this stage, but I don't think it helps you. No. And when it starts coming straight for you like that, you're in trouble. I don't really know always the best way to avoid it. But we will loot this game. But, uh, yeah. oh, the eye is almost, almost, almost disposed of. There we go. Goodbye, eye. And then, of course, it loops. So yeah, I mean, once I'm dead here, you're seeing you've got your little star in the corner to show you've looted. Which again, tradition in all these 80s games. Complete a loop, you get a little token to show you complete the loop. And um, yeah. Maybe not one that people immediately think of as a classic arcade game, but before it was emulated, there were many requests for this one. I think, again, because it's one of those that did get imported into America and had a Midway's name on it people thought it was a Midway game and so more, were more interested in seeing it emulated than if they'd just known it was an Atari game Atari? Uh, uh, what's it called? Zacharia isn't it? yeah Zacharia so why did I say Atari? but uh, yeah, it's, it's strange because people remember things like a uh, uh, Gale Coast World Rally is an Atari game because that got licensed to Atari in America and they sort of forget that it was a Spanish game. It's like they sort of forget this one was a, an Italian game. Or Bagman was a French game. Um, yeah, I quite like that one. I'm not very good at it, but you know, it's, it's one of those. You get better if you practice a bit more. Um, Let's have a look at Imago. This one is a centipede clone. 
with galaxian style stars by Acom. It stands out maybe for being over the top in terms of the hardware. I mean, it's got an entire set of ROM dedicated to this two color background overlay thing with the, uh, you know, the wavy strips on. And uh, if you're just making what is essentially a clone of Centipede, I, I don't know why you'd go to the trouble of having dedicated hardware for drawing a two color background, but they did. So there you have it. Galaxian stars, an extra two color background, and a centipede style gameplay. It does hold up on its own as a, as a game, but it is really centipede. You can't deny that. Just shoot these balls and they move up rather than mushrooms that disappear. It would be very easy to have emulated this and not realised it needed the background though. But luckily when it was dumped, uh, the person that dumped it had the PCB in hand made, took, taken photos of it running and so we knew, oh okay, that's what that run for. Yes, it's meant to be there, it's meant to be a background. Yeah, there are quite a few centipede ripoffs actually, and a lot of them are original pieces of code. There's that uh, War of Bugs game as well. It's got a ridiculously long title, which was also ended up being rethemed as Space Train, I think. I put Space Train on actually. And centipedes, uh, nice. It's a good concept. I'm surprised that aren't more modern games using it. But this maybe it's just a bit too 80s. I mean, the, the elements are incorporated in some shooters, I guess. But not quite in the same way. This is a slightly easier than a lot of centipedes type games too. As you can see, I'm not doing terribly badly. I managed to get to round four. Mm -hmm. It's like you've got little bowling balls. Unfortunately, you can't roll them into things and have them destroy them. That'd be quite nice if you could shoot these and just roll them into things and, you know, split the centipede in half with them but uh, that does not appear to be a mechanic oh there we go I got I actually got hit by something yeah, you see you can just mm -hmm. centipede de bowling would be a weird crossover wouldn't it or something like that I got a bonus life. Oh, I've got double ship. It's gone all uh, Gallagher on me. Now I've got bonus life. <laughs> oh, what did I crash into? I wasn't looking. So yeah, a bit of high score music. Space, the limitless unknown dimension awaiting the advent of mankind. Hmm. That's a subtitle, isn't it? So we've been streaming for almost an hour. I'm gonna keep going for a little bit. I did say I'd look briefly at Space Train, which is a hack of a <laughs> It's not a hack of the one I just played, it's a hack of a different one, but here we go. Just in case, you know, you want your centipede to not quite look like centipede, you can always make it look like a train. And that's what it's going to tell me. Yeah. So, yes, let's play Space Train. 
or space monorail. I don't really know. It looks more like a monorail than a train or a ship. But you know, and this is what space trains look like. If you ever wanted to know, if you see one of these pull up, you might get a ride somewhere. But uh, you can't ride the space train, unfortunately. You just have to shoot it. It feels awkward though because the sprite is bigger than what you're shooting. So yeah, it's one of those odd hacks, isn't it? I mean, it's a hack of uh, say War of the Bugs thing, not a hack of Centipede itself. I'm only going to play a single credit on it. Now one thing I was going to play on the stream, but I forgot to apply the patch to test it, is um, Gaioko speed up, so I'll have to do that in another stream. Because there have been some sound issues in the last few releases after Memory System Rewrite, and they there's a proposed fix for those at the moment. Yeah, the, this ends up with very flickery graphics at place, in places, which I think might be just a flaw in the, this hack. Unless it's some kind of partial update issue. I'm not sure. I'm quickly losing my lives now. So, uh. Not all these hacks of games on Galaxian hardware are that well done. Especially not when the hacks of um, unknown games in the first place. I mean, not many people would really go out of the way to play War of Bugs in the first place, so for a company to then make a hack of a game that like that, it, it feels like a strange thing to do, but it happened more than you'd maybe think. We oh do, I think that's it. I think that's my credit done. The space train has come to an end. Um, ooh. <laughs> right, I'm going to play a game with no graphics. But, you know, bear with me. I'm going to play this game. Because you can play this game just with no graphics. Now, this is Cebu's Air Raid, which doesn't work because there are no graphics dumped. Apart from the text layer, which is the only part that is dumped. It's quite loud. Now, this one... I mean, the problem here is all the graphics are contained in custom modules. And there's no obvious way to dump them. The uh, background tile maps are hard-coded layouts with, and the layout data is inside the module. The actual graphic data is inside the module, and the colour lookup from is inside the module. For the sprite modules, obviously there's no lookup table because there's the sprites. So you've got your colour prom lookup, and you've still got your colour prom lookup, but you've not got your sort of tire map layout, but you've got your sprite graphic data in there too. So the sprite modules are less complex, but they're still not easy to dump and um, it's not clear if there's any way on the actual edges of the modules to get the raw data out or if you just end up with sort of a black box of, of a complete tile map layout with all the data pre-processed and you know just a huge bitmap rather than the real data. Um, for the sprites again you might only go to access the data after it's gone through the colour prom, the lookup prom which isn't ideal because you're not getting the original data and so yeah so far this is, you know, nobody's managed to figure out how to get it dumped, and if it's dimpable at all. It might be one of the very, very tricky decap type jobs for all we know. And unfortunately, it's, this isn't the only game using this technology. You've got, um, I think it's Pop and Run. And that one is a super rare, possibly even prototype game. So, you know, nobody wants to risk their super rare Pop and Run to dump the graphics until there's a solid technique to do it and even then it's a risk 
So, you know, while Air Raid is quite common, and in some some people say it's like the pro, it's the, it's the prequel to Raiden. I don't think it really is a prequel to Raiden, it's just a shooter that's subdued before Raiden. It's not really got anything common. Uh, it'd be nice to see it dumped and everything at some point, but so far, nobody's managed to. But it is quite interesting that you can play it without graphics. You can see where the bullets are, you can see where your player ship is. Unfortunately, sometimes there's lots of junk over, over things and you have to guess if things are good to pick up or bad. You get to hear the music and <laughs> you know, it's something. But you're probably just wondering why I'm playing a, a game with no graphics. It's not the only game I've played with no graphics either. There's, a, there's one or two where there probably won't ever be graphic ROM dumps but you can still sort of get an idea of the gameplay. Uh, one of those I'm actually tempted at this point since it's been about 20 years to make a graphics ROM. But I don't know if that's a good idea or not. You got your bombs, see? You can tell it's a bomb. Yeah, that, this is Air Raid and um, yeah, it's got no graphic dumps but it's still kind of playable. I was, I'm going to briefly put um, the other one on actually. Yeah, this is this is the other one that suffers the same problem because it's it uses the same modules. But this is a kick, uh, not kick and run, a pop and run. This is a very odd game where you're walking along. A... So this is a bit bit more difficult to play without graphics. I think it's a platformer type thing where you're actually walking along it, a, a line. It looks almost like sort of vib ribbon if you look at the actual how it's meant to look. Very, very basic graphics, but again, they're inside modules, and so what you're left with is a game that really you can't play. And I have far less hope that this one will ever be properly dumped because it is also ridiculously rare. So, you know, that's just one of those things. I, I, I keep hoping, but. You know, there's a point where you start to think it's not going to happen, is it? Um, and yeah, I sort of reached that point with that one. I did say I'd look briefly again at the one I looked at the other day, didn't I? Which is Combat Hawk. Let me see. I played this on the, um, the Sega stream the other day. If we recap it. I think it's a proto. There's no attract mode. Just the title screen. Doesn't really let you know what to do, and I struggled to work out what to do when I played it the other day because I kept running out of fuel. So let's give it another try today. So you blast people in three doors. You've just got three fire buttons and up and down. Those are your controls. And you go between the, the, the locations. Now, I think you're meant to keep firing those coins that drop to refuel. Because I was watching a YouTube video of somebody else playing it, and that's what they did. So, once the coin dropped... I'm not getting any better than not shooting the scientists, though. But I want to see if that does work, and if it's, it's just a case of continually firing at the coins. Or if it's trickier. Because I only looked at the video, I didn't try playing it again since... Hmm. I think I would be terrible if this was my job. So yeah, if you keep firing this, I well I've already got full, full fuel at the moment anyway. Yeah, if you fire it enough times it says fuel up. So that is the very odd mechanic for refueling in this game. It's completely illogical. I don't know what the other power-ups are, the ones with bees on. Yeah, you, you would not imagine that would be the mechanic for f refueling. It's 
not again it's, it sort of hints at the whole thing that I think this is probably a prototype and they just hadn't quite got a good mechanic in place yet If it was a light gun game and it was a challenge to shoot in the right place of the screen, that also might make more sense. But it's just three buttons. It does get a bit more tricky, a bit trickier when you've got to deal with a another enemy at the same time as you're trying to juggle that. But no, I always thought I was doing so well then as well. I still don't understand what the uh, markers are for the doors. The uh, one, two, three, four, five, six up there. It seems to indicate where people are, but. All right, so yeah, that's how you refuel on that. So in theory, I could probably actually complete the first level now um, if I was to play a bit better. So for anybody who watched the previous stream and didn't know how to refuel on that, because I didn't myself, that's what you do. You, you juggle those uh, token things that get dropped by some of the enemies and it lets you refuel. So yeah, that's a quick second look at Combat Hawk, which did need a second look. Um... We go Korean. Let's go semicom. Semicom's unicorn. And the is it the alternate style logo. It's not their most common logo. This is obviously a Pang style game called Chucky Chucky. Now I think there are, there's an undumped Korean version of this with a different title, but. Um, this is the version that's emulated. But as you can see, it's sort of versus Pang. You've got two sides of the playfield. And I'm off to a very bad start there. It doesn't play like your traditional pen game because you, you're playing against the opponent. And obviously, if you get hit, that does no good for your energy bar. But I lost, apparently. And sometimes it helps to let things bounce over to the other side. But Semicom actually were pretty good at this. They've got a few games that are more original concepts, although I'm doing really badly at it. There we go. I won that time, so I think that's one each. Or yeah, you wouldn't count us down the bottom, I think. So there's a number of bubbles left to spawn on your side is at the top. Again, I don't think this mechanic is in a proper pan game, is it? Unless there's a two-player mode in one of them that I missed. If anybody knows and wants to correct me, go ahead. It looks like the Streamlabs issue of it spawning false donations might be fixed at least. That's good. Did I win? No. I did not win. No, it's best of. No, it's not even best of um, three. Oh, 
But this and um, Hatch Catch is the other Semicom game that strikes me as quite original. It's a puzzle game. It looks like a um, magical drop on the surface, but really isn't. And that time I just lost all my energy, so yeah, I lost that round. Um, yeah, Semicom is chocky chocky. A different take on Pang for anybody who's played Pang to death and wants something a little different. This has the same basic gameplay. Shall I have a look at um, football game? Let's play some football. Let's play Taito's Power Goal. This is one of the games that in Japan was part of the Hat Trick Hero series, along with you know Football Champ and the like. A series that has some entries that don't quite fit, but this one I believe was the 95 entry in Japan. But got called Super Power Goal over here. Seems like they were never quite sure what they wanted to call these outside of Japan. Now, I forgot it's an F3 game, so volume needs to go up because it's very quiet. But uh, these are the games where, well, it's not the most realistic football simulation ever. You just, you know, you're beating up the referee and. Um, all sorts, which I'm pretty sure is not allowed in a real game of football. I mean, maybe it happens, but I imagine beating up referee and other players is going to get you sent off. Or not, I'm knocking the referee out with the ball, maybe. You can kick it straight at him if you want. And you can knock out the camera people. And yes, the strategies for these games where you can always get into a certain position, always cross the ball in a certain way, and always score. And um, that, that's not them. You just have to learn them. Now, um, I've not contributed much to the F3 emulation myself. Um, I did fix the crowd in these games at one point. It, because um, it, they use a different line technique for rendering the crowd. It wasn't fully supported. There we go. I have scored a goal. So, yeah, I do like this. These uh, F3 versions of the football games. So, I mean, they're they're arcade football games. They're pretty basic stuff, but they look good. They've used good use of the hard drive feel to give the look that you want. And uh, that was terrible. You know, you got your zoom in, zoom out tilt forward, tilt back using the row scroll and row select effects. Uh, it's just, you know, I don't find the gameplay compelling on these, but off the line. Oh, there you go, you see, just knee somebody in the face. Somebody did it to me. Off the ball too. Terrible. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, one nil in the first match is not the best score. Is it oh, well, it's probably not going to be one nil then, is it? Unless I miss this, which I might do. Not much to do on the penalty, you just select a direction and kick, press the fire to kick, I think. But there we go, apparently, you know, last minute penalty, 2 0. There we go. The, the first match in these is never challenging. In fact, if you were to try, you could probably win it by many, many, many goals. But I kind of always worry that if you do that, the game's going to rank up, although I don't think these ones do. But like some, um, especially shooters, if you're doing well, the game will become much more difficult than if you do okay. So sometimes a good strategy if you just want to survive is to do okay rather than great. Um, however, on these, I'm not sure that's the case. 
There's still some football games that aren't emulated that ideally would be nice to see some progress on. The most famous being uh, Cebu Cup Soccer. No, I'm really letting the goal. Uh, Cebu Cup Soccer, where only the goal 92 bootleg works, and that's a really bad bootleg. But Cebu Cup Soccer is heavily protected, and also an odd case, even in terms of the Cebu protection, because um, the Olympic Soccer set, which is confirmed of running as Olympic Soccer on the PCBs, actually requires a ROM patch to run as Olympic Soccer. And it's like there's something overlaying the ROM area as well on the those boards. Although hopefully that doesn't um, also affect the, how the protection's working. I don't think they would do that, but they might have done that. You know, why, why not overlay some parts that interact with the protection just to mess things up a bit more? So I'm just hoping they haven't because it's confusing enough as it is. And that's not how you play. I can play. I can, you know, I can select a power up, super sliding. That's probably not the really one I wanted, is it? We need super shot. And it's two now. And this is where I fail. What's the X2000 system being advertised in the background there? <laughs> oh dear. So there we go. This was Tato Power Goal. And I didn't do very well at it. And I might come back and play this one another time because they're, they're fun little games to play. I just wanted to play it right now for no real reason other than seem like a good idea turn the volume back down because otherwise the next game is going to be silly loud if there is a next game i think there will be another game so yeah let's go let's talk about cebu let's go um cabal now this one just had a little bug fix go in which should be in the next release which means the sound cpu now boots up properly because before it wasn't booting the sound cpu until you got to, to the next bit loud still wasn't booting the sound CPU until you got to the demo, which meant if you turned a track sounds off, it couldn't be coined up at all. Um, a small bug in the Cebu sound system emulation, which uh, has been fixed and will be fi uh, you know should work in the next release. I've not, uh, you know I have tested the fix after it went in just to make sure it did what it said it was meant to do, and it appears to do so. Uh, it's not the biggest source of irritation, but if you did run your, you know, your machine with the demo sounds turned off, you would notice it because suddenly the game was unplayable in MAME. So yeah, this is this is a classic. I think the the sequel, you know, the games that copied the formula sort of refined it a bit and did it slightly better, but. but just memorable because you can destroy basically everything. Shoot the buildings a bit, they fall down. You know, here we go. There we go. And Blood Brothers was obviously the sequel. That was hacked into hard times. Pirates is a Spanish take on it that's really good. It's just, just one of those games that. You no know, works. The idea is sound. You've got your little invulnerability on your rolls. And it's just satisfying to be able to destroy things. Uh, there's a wall there. There's not a wall there anymore. Uh, the, this is the joystick version. There's also a trackball version where you roll the trackball more quickly to do your rolls and things like that. But it, it plays fine on a joystick. Uh, I, I'd probably prefer the joystick version to be honest. But, um, so it fits up there with things like Operation Wolf in terms of war based shooters. Obviously, it's a very different gameplay style to Operation Wolf. 
I think this could have worked with a light gun type of setup, but they never did that. It's just, but the visuals, I mean, it's an army compound, isn't it? I guess that's what reminded me of Operation Wolf. Okay, but what I was saying, um, now it still works again if you turn off the demo sound. You still get the beep on startup, but you can coin it up now. No, demo sounds are off, you can still coin it up. So that's the bug fix that went in recently. Um, so if that's been annoying you for, for whatever reason, then the next version of MAME is probably one to look out for because that, that is fixed up now. And uh, you know now it's understood why it was happening. It shouldn't happen again. Uh, well, I'm going to end with something simple. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to save that one for an M stream. I'm going to play. This one. This is fantastic, Tato do Brazil version of Gallagher. Again, Tato do Brazil, very strange entity. Claimed to be, you know, the official branch of Tato Taito in Brazil, but really just made bootleg games and rewrote popular games for weaker hardware. And yeah, without any licenses. So, you know, they had no license to use the Gallagher graphics here. Um, and the game really, I, I don't think Taito themselves would even acknowledge it as a Taito game. <laughs> but this is a version of Gallagher on Galaxian type hardware that was coded from scratch. And you know, has to work within the limitations of the hardware being used. And the star field is obviously done in a very strange way here and ends up scrolling with the background because it's part of the same layer. It doesn't play too badly for a game that is just a complete knockoff on far inferior hardware. <laughs> Obviously, not as good as the real thing. The sound is a bit odd. But it's got the nice enemy patterns as they swoop in. Like I say, you can't really call it a bootleg because it, well, it steals the sprites, but it doesn't steal the code. So is that a bootleg or is that not? I mean, it's a difficult one to call really, isn't it? It's clearly not an original idea, but it's an original piece of code. So an unlicensed port, maybe? I mean, had this been a home computer and a home computer release of the game, I think people would be quite happy with it. Sound to fight you. Oh, there you got me. It's obviously it's all in Portuguese because it is from Brazil. There's also a Galaxian type game running on um, Space Invaders style hardware, just to you know, complete the <laughs> complete the downgrade. You've got Gallagher on Galaxian style hardware and Galaxian on Space Invaders style hardware. I, mean, I might give that one a quick look actually after I, I lost this credit as the final game for this stream because it's only meant to be a short stream. And we're already on about an hour and a half. And that lapse of concentration brings the game to an end. Yes, this was fantastic. For a long time, it was also on lists of undumped official Tato games. But yeah, it's 
a Tato de Brazil game, so not really what you'd call official, but definitely a fantastic, uh, a fantastic achievement, I would say. And yes, the, the pun was intended. Here you go, you see, on Galaxian hardware. So what was the other one? The other one was Galactica, I think. Yeah, that's the one. So this is very similar, but this one is Space Invaders type hardware. And the game is, well, Galaxian. <laughs> Show something, there we go. So here you've not got any sprites or anything. This is a bitmap based system. And they have coded, well, Galaxian on it with planes. I mean, this is more original in terms of graphics. These aren't the Galaxian sprites, but the gameplay is, you know, well, it's Galaxian, isn't it? It's got a, quite a bit slow down. The hardware's not really good enough to be running it. But it makes a change from Space Invaders games on Space Invaders hardware, I have to say. So many Space Invaders hardware games were just Space Invaders knockoffs or bootlegs. And this is actually trying to be Galaxian. Last few. Nope. Don't know why it's slow now, but it is slow now. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's one way to end it. Next round. And yeah, this is the final game of this stream, so once this credit's over, I will be shutting down and probably exporting the replay to. YouTube, even if I'm rather embarrassed about misreading messages earlier and about going to work and leaving work, but I think that's nerves. If I'm nervous, I tend to misread things. sound is quite intense. I don't know why it has no sound at all towards the end of a wave like this. It's actually a bit of a relief. Oh, now, now it's come back. Now it's gone. Unless there's a sound, there's another sound that's meant to be playing that just isn't emulated. No, I think that's my last life. Yes, that's my last life. So, Akabu, which... I'm guessing means game over or something along those lines. Yes, uh, Galactica. The Tato do Brazil, Spanish version of Galaxian on Space Invaders hardware. Again, want to try, if not tried it, just as a curiosity more than anything else, I would say. There you go. I'm going to be ending the stream very shortly. So, as always, thank you to everybody who's joined in. I hope anybody watching this on Catch Up also has enjoyed it and maybe find some games that they've not played before and want to have a look at. But, yeah, that's it, that's it for now. So um, see you next time and goodbye. Take care, everybody.